Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got the IMO Q2 Plus. Now one of you guys asked in the comments underneath the IMO Q4 video if I can get my hands on, on the IMO um, Q2 Plus and as you can see <laughs> IMO was generous enough to send a review unit. So we're going to start as usual with the unboxing. So struggling a bit here. <laughs> We've got the micro USB cable in the box. There is no plug. However, you can use any other standard USB plug if you'd like to. Um, so, yep. And then we also have the battery, as you can see, a replaceable battery of a 1500 milliampere hour size. Um, so that's that. And then we also have a quick start guide which more or less explains what's what, where it is located and so on and how to put the battery and SIM card in. So let's have a look at the actual handset itself. So as you can see, pretty neat, very pocket friendly, decent size. So we've got a two megapixel camera on the back with an LED flash. We've got the plastic back however it's not as prone to fingerprints as I thought it would be power button volume down volume up micro USB on the very top next to the headphone jack nothing on the bottom apart from the microphone and then we've got a rear facing speaker on the back so if you want to open the phone you just slide your nail in and you open up the handset itself which gives you access to a nano sim a memory card slot as you can see on the icon in here and then we also have a, the battery and um, that slides in nicely so yeah that's that back button home button recent button front facing vga camera and an earpiece now the battery is about to die and it's 16 percent so yeah Let's charge it up. So the phone has been charged up, takes approximately an hour and 15 minutes, which isn't that bad to charge it up. We are running on Android 9 Go edition with a security update from January 2020. So pretty decent. Um, then we've got a couple of additional features being an IMO handset. They always uh, like to add some stuff. Um, so we've got the jump to camera which uh, works by pressing the bot for power button twice. We've got the swipe up on the home button. Now this is a bit of a tricky one because I thought it's the actual hardware home button that you have to press. Uh, and as you can see, that's not the case. No, you have to drag it from the bottom of the screen for it to work. Voila, happy days, magic happens. So yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get back to where we were. And then we've got prevent ringing by pressing the power button and volume down um, together. Then we've got the digital well-being and parental controls, which is always nice, especially if you're planning to buy buying the phone for a minor. And then we've got some accessibility settings where you can adjust the font size, display size, magnifier glass, uh, reduce animations, mono audio and so on when it comes to security and location we've got a screen lock with a swipe pattern pin and password both this being an imo handset you also have face unlock and as you can see it's pretty fast worked really really well on the imo q4 and i did not expect anything less from the q2 plus however considering the price of the phone uh, $29.99 or $34.99 depends when you buy it and you can get it from Argos EE or um, Vodafone pretty decent now again a couple of neat features from IMO so you've got a power menu so when you press and hold the power button you can add additional features so you can for example switch between audio profiles or you can turn the airplane mode or on off um, yep works really well and call so for example let's say it's raining and the screen is not registering your touch inputs 
you can press the power button to finish the call. Then when it comes to the home button, you can press and hold the home button and it can do different things for you. So it doesn't have to be a search assistant. You can, for example, set it up to launch a camera and same applies to double tap action. So let's say we're gonna do search assistant by double tapping the home button and voila, Google now fires up. Pretty neat, isn't it? And then we're the same with the recent button, which is to the right of the home button. Now I'm not really sure why is there a wake up device with a volume button if you've got a dedicated power button to the right and turning it on it also turns off the playback control so what happens is that if your phone screen is off and you press volume down or volume up you press and hold it skips the track in terms of audio profiles you've got a special outdoor mode which kind of enhances the volume sacrificing the quality uh, but at least you can hear it if you've got it in your bag um, and so on when it comes to display uh, pretty standard features all around. Um, actually, let's adjust the font size. It's not that I'm going blind, however, yeah, much better. Considering the size of the screen, 4 inch, yes, it does make a bit more sense to put the font to a, adjust the font to a larger size. Um, apps and notification, nothing major in here. And then network and internet, you've got Wi Fi, you've got 4G. Again, considering the price of the phone, pretty neat. And obviously, if you'd like to, you can connect Bluetooth now. There is no um, NFC, so unfortunately no Google Pay. Considering the price of the handset, though, it's not that bad. In terms of the standard features, like, you know, making a phone call and sending a text message, a lot of you guys complain about, like, you know, entry-level phones being slow, sluggish, taking ages to load up a dialer or anything like that. So I thought with these phones, I'm gonna see what's what's the story in here. And as you can see, it's it's actually pretty decent. Um, did take a second or two to load up a text message, but other than that, considering one gigabyte of RAM, quad core processor, the price of the handset, it's not that bad. And as you can see, once it loads the text messages up, flawless, no issues at all, like that. Okay, so let's go back. Worked pretty well. Even browsing, like a lot of you guys again complain that, you know, browsing everyday typical usage is quite poor with entry level handsets. That's not the case with the IMO Q2 Plus, as you can see. Um, now there is, the, it's it's not all like, you know, uh, brilliant and so on. It would be nice if the phone, for example, would have uh, the home recent and back button, you know, lit up and stuff like that, backlighted. But considering the price of the handset, it's actually not that bad. In terms of pre-installed apps, we've got a calculator, we've got a built-in FM radio. So again, if you're camping, and you've got headphones plugged in that double up as an antenna, works pretty well. You've got some Go Edition apps. So as usual, you've got the Google um, Go Maps Go, for example. However, this being an Android device, it doesn't stop you from um, downloading a full-blown app. So I'll show you the difference between these two. So first of all, when you launch the Google Maps Go Edition, it works via Chrome. So it's exactly the same as going to uh, maps.google.com and then once you find the destination and you click navigate in app what it then launches it launches google navigation go which is a secondary app navigation for google maps go um which you know isn't isn't bad it, it's it's how google designed it but it takes a while so and actually doesn't show many streets to be honest i'll show you the difference uh, between this and a full-blown um, Google Maps. So now we're gonna fire up standard Google Maps, if I can find it. Obviously it's next to Maps Go. Here we go. I might actually need new glasses. And then let's have a look. Let's search for McDonald's again. So, here we go.
Okay, and let's tap that for the results. It's also nice because it all, all gives you straight away um, all the information about the place as well, like standard maps do, where you don't get that with Google Maps Go. And then you press start and the navigation starts. So, and as you can see, it actually shows that there are more than one or two streets next to my place. Mm, so yeah, works really well. It's obviously up to you which app you're gonna use, but it's always nice to have a choice. Okay, so that's that. And then let's have a look at the actual camera. So you get a two megapixel camera, You've got the HDR mode, as usual, the picture samples will be at the very end of the video. Um, we also have a front-facing 0.3 megapixel camera, but the back-facing camera actually has some neat features. So you've got a manual mode, white balance, um, exposure value, ISO, uh, burst mode, panorama filters, so you don't have to download additional apps to put some filters on. Obviously, if you want to, you can, but considering a limited storage of eight gigabytes, um, expandable via memory card up to 32, obviously, um, you don't have to. And then you've got a built-in QR code and a night mode as well, QR code scanner. Now, when it comes to the actual camera settings, you can use the volume button as a camera shutter. Uh, you can do a quick capture by pressing the volume down twice. Um, you can even change the picture quality if you'd like to. And you can reduce from 2 megapixels <laughs> even further if you'd like to. And then it's, there's even a composition line and AI detect, so it will try and detect faces. When it comes to recording videos, let's have a look. 720p, 480p and CIF. So considering the price of the phone, it's not that bad. Okay. So yeah, if you like to, you can even use it for video calls, um, having that front-facing camera. But what I'm interested in is how does it actually sound, that speaker? Is it decent? Is it very decent? Let's have a look. So yeah, thanks for watching another episode of Quick Expert Reviews and I'll speak to you soon guys. Bye!